So now that we have our level that we can now play in, uh, we're going to set up some inputs so that we can sprint and jump. So we'll go to edit, if you didn't catch that, edit project settings input, and we'll go to action mappings because we don't need a value for these ones. And we'll go to sprint, and that will bug out because it always does. And then for sprint, we'll use left shift. You'll have to scroll down a bit for it. And we'll add another one called jump, which we will map to spacebar. Set those as default. OK. Exit that and go into our code, because we're going to have to add a couple of things um, to work this stuff properly. We'll start with sprinting. So we'll do bool b sprinting. And we'll need a couple of floats. One would be the original walk speed. Yeah, let's just call it original walk speed. And we'll make a constant float called const sprint speed. And we'll set that to 1200. It's a bit fast, but uh, for the purposes of what we're doing, it should be OK. Uh, so now we will create some functions that we can call on sprint enter so when we hit shift and on sprint end for when we release shift and we'll just create those if you can't do this I'm using a trial version of uh, VAX which works really well and provides a lot of cool things like create implementation um, and when we hit shift and call this function we just want to set B sprinting to true and in this one, be sprinting is false. Um, and of course, we're going to need to map these actions. So we'll do what we've done before, and we'll just do bind action for sprint. Oops. And then we'll give it an input event. You don't need to uh, scope out to these. I like doing it just for uh, brevity. And we'll do it pressed. We want to pass it uh, a version of us. Well, us and a player character on sprint to enter. So now that will be called when um, when we hit sh uh, shift and now just copy that, paste this and change input event to IE released and change on sprint enter to on sprint end. Okay, so now these two will be called, and then we, in order to actually make us sprint, we want to go to our move front back function, and then we just want to, just before we do anything, we want to check um, if we have character movement, then check if we're sprinting, if we're sprinting, oops, Character movement. There we go. Um, I think it's. I have to pull this up. Can't remember what it is. It's uh, walk max walk speed. You'd think that I'd remember that. So we'll set the max walk speed um, to the constant sprint speed that we set. Otherwise, if we're not sprinting, then just set it to our original walk speed. We can also actually, if B sprinting, and we can also do and character movement max walk speed is not equal uh, constant speed. And then we can do else if not be sprinting and character movement max walk speed it's not equal original walk speed and then we can just do this check uh, once and pass through whereas before we would have to just constantly set this for no reason it doesn't really make much of a difference you can leave it, leave it the way that you did um, or that we had it sorry and then 
up in the constructor, we just want to set our original walk speed to, uh, let's check actually, if character movement, just to make sure, and then we'll set our original walk speed to character movement, max walk speed. So we'll set that once, and then when we come down here, we will make those appropriate uh, changes to our speed. Uh, for jumping, it's actually quite easy because the character movement actually has uh, jump functionality built built into it. You just need to tell it uh, what you want, what function you want uh, to call when you press the jump button that we've mapped to. So we'll do a input event I pressed this and a player character. On. Oh, we have actually. I haven't made this function yet. Sorry about that. And we'll just set these same thing just for jump on um, jump enter. Oops, void on um, jump. And actually, I'm going to change this to on um, sprint start. Sorry, and get my emails out of the way. We'll rename that. And we'll do the same thing for on jump enter and we'll make that start. Uh, so that's changed everything. That refactor has changed everything for me. That option was also in VAX. Um, I don't think that's native in 2013 for C++. It is for C sharp. But thankfully you won't have to change much. Uh, or you don't have to change it all. You could have left it uh, the way it is. We'll do for this on jump start and then we'll just copy that and do the same thing we did before change this to released and this to end then we'll create those functions and it's the same thing as the sprint we'll do b uh, what's it called? B. Can't remember what it is. B press jump. There we go. Sorry. B press jump equals true. And then B press jump equals false. So now, when we compile this, we should be able to. Uh, sprint and jump. So, if we go in here now and hit play, let's see. We can jump, and let's see if we can sprint, and we can sprint. Beautiful. And we can sprint and jump. There we go. So that's it for this tutorial. The next one will be drawing the crosshair in preparation for um, targeting and firing at um, uh, the propane tanks. So I guess I'll just keep calling them pro propane tanks because they do explode and they do kind of look like propane tanks. Uh, so yeah, the next tutorial will be covering the HUD and setting the crosshair texture and we'll learn how to bring those in and um, and draw them. So we'll see you soon.